welcome everyone in this NPTEL online certification course on biological process design for wastewater treatment. So, we have come to the virtually end of the this uh, course and we are going to today learn the last section in this course and that last section is common effluent treatment plant CETP and CETP are used a lot. The common effluent treatment plant is the process of collecting, conveying, treating and disposing of the effluent from industrial states. So, what does it mean? So, we may have some special economic zone and a number of industries may be there. So, there are a number of plots which have number of industries. So, what we do is that in the common effluent treatment plant, uh, we have a common effluent treatment plant. So, these member industries they treat the wastewater up to a certain level and then they will discharge to a common line which will go to the uh, common effluent treatment plant the CETP. So, and these industries may be same in nature or different in nature. So, certainly they will do some primary treatment depending upon the type of wastewater which is discharged and then it will go to CETP. The advantage is that they do not have to incur that much cost with respect to treatment and they do not require space also which is required for installing all the treatment plant units. So, this is the method that is why the common effluent treatment plants are always used and they are preferred. So, the effluent uh, which may be taken may include industrial wastewater, domestic sewage generated from the industrial plant. So, both can be taken care. This concept of CTP helps small as well as medium scale industries to discard and dispose of their effluents without much treatment. So, CTPs have been mounted and are in operation at several business clusters in India and worldwide. They serve to the lower effluent treatment expenses and offer high collective treatment and decrease the land expenses for small scale business centers. So, the industries do not have to have very high land for treatment of uh, the wastewater that will be taken care of by the CTP. There are generally two types of CTP homogeneous when the numerous industries with inside the state are similar. So, when all the industries are similar in nature, we can have homogeneous CTP, we can have heterogeneous CTP when the industries produce different products and their wastewater effluent is has different characteristics. Now, the advantages of CTP, CTP uh, facilitates economic of scale in waste treatment, thereby reducing the cost of pollution uh, abatement for individual SMEs. Uh, the addresses the lack of space, uh, it addresses the lack of space, because the individual industries may not have enough space for treatment and so they can do very minor treatment or no treatment and discharge the water to CTP where the all the treatment can be done. Also homogenization of wastewater, so all the industries will discharge water, so wastewater will become more homogeneous in nature that can be taken care of. But in the case of heterogeneous CTP sometimes problem may also happen if some if suppose somebody discharges uh, suddenly large amount of surfactant into the wastewater. So, CETP may not be able to cater to that. So, that problem may also happen, but it is generally the homogenization more happens. Relatively better hydraulic stability, professional control over treatment can be affordable because there will be professionals which will be hired in the CETP. It facilitates small scale units which often cannot internalize the externalities due to the control of pollution. So, the pollution aspect can be taken care of for the small industries, eliminates multiple discharges in the area because if the many industries are there, so they may be discharging individually. So, in place of that they are discharging to a common pipeline network and which is going to CTP. So, that means it eliminates multiple discharges. So, overall the water can be more carefully taken care of, provides opportunity to improve the recycling and reuse possibilities, facilitates better organization of treated effluent and sludge disposal etcetera. So, planning of CETP is very important. 
So, there are various inputs and outputs for choosing the treatment scheme. Okay. So, location of CTP, feasibility of the disposal methods, selection of best feasible mode of disposal uh, and then also the checking the capacity and recipient water body is treated water quality requirements. All these are the major factors which are taken into account uh, with respect to choice of treatment scheme. So, this the inputs may be industrial state or clusters identification of various types of waste water which will be generated in the industries, dry inventory of the waste water, similarly wet inventory, then choice of collection systems whether pipeline, tanker, etcetera, all these are input and output is with respect to after treatment what will go. So, if the selection treatment scheme techno-economically acceptable, no. So, we have to explore the optimization of different things. If yes, we can go for establishing the CETP. The factors that influence the proper planning and operation of CETPs include the categories of effluent generating member industries, qualitative and quantitative fluctuations of effluent which is likely possible, what will be the pre-treatment requirements whether we have to segregate effluent streams at individual member industries itself or not, a collection and monitoring mechanism because collection is very important and also we have to see that monitoring of the in, uh, individual effluent is also done. Uh, suddenly somebody is discharging very heavily load, so it will affect the wastewater quality. So, uh, the, similarly we have to maybe alter the parameters at the CETP. So, this is very important the treatability choice of the technology and biodegradability interferences etcetera have to be taken care of, mode of disposal and cost analysis. So, all have to be performed for CETP. The categories of effluent generating industries, the treatability of the mixed effluent streams generated from various types of industries is a complex issue with respect to providing a treatment scheme and its operation. The CTP can be classified based upon the combination of industries. Those already told uh, CTPs may be homogeneous, those who are serving homogeneous industries like textile, tannery, etcetera. So, all member industries fall in the same industry sector. So, the CTP will be called as homogeneous CTP. Those the CTP may be heterogeneous serving heterogeneous industries including chemical industries. So, for this, this issues may be complex. So, detailed inventory of the member industries in, is an essential first step in the process of planning of a CTP to understand the nature of operations and likely constituents of the effluent. Then the wastewater inventory, the process of developing a wastewater inventory involves the following, identifying the potential users of CTP. Okay their types and the number of industries in that geographical area, identifying the type whether it is organic, inorganic, toxic and volume of wastewater generated uh, whether it is concentrated, dilute, etcetera. Then estimate the future waste load also in the industry, may be some new industry may come up in the cluster okay, or the expansion may happen. So, these also have to be identified identifying the treatment options, examining the compatibility and identifying the treatment options is important. Then evaluating the cleaner technologies, whether recommending changes in the raw material, manufacturing process. So, these industries may be suggested to go for cleaner production technologies, so that they may change the raw material also, they may change the manufacturing process, uh, thus they will be able to reduce the waste generation in individual member industries in order to facilitate the smooth functioning of the CETP. Now, uh, qualitative and quantitative fluctuations of effluent, the quantity of effluent, the effluent quantity can be assessed based upon the water balance submitted by the individual industries to state pollution control board uh, in their consent application. So, from that we can tentatively know that what is the quantity of effluent that will be generated. 
while arriving at the size of CET with respect to flow, the various unit operations considered shall be sized and the layout is prepared to add additional units in future depending upon the project growth rate of the specific industries in the region. So, we in the layout the CTP plant in such a manner that we should be able to add more units in future if the effluent production increases because of the expansion of industries or addition of more industries. Flow rate, the flow rate is important in determining the size of CTP. So, minimum and maximum flows should be computed beforehand so as to decide the hydraulic computation and the size of the pipe distribution because the water will be collected depending upon the flow rate. Okay, so, from different industries. So, the conveying system water wastewater conveying system is very important. So, size of the pipe their distribution etcetera is very important. The anticipated future expansion should also be taken care of. The effluent characteristics, physical characteristics of the effluent whether temperature, color, order, uh, total uh, solids, total volatile solids all have to be tentatively understood beforehand. Also the chemical characteristics pH, the amount of different uh, COD, BOD all those things also have to be analyzed. Also we need to beforehand know that whether toxic metals will be present in the water or not. So, whether we have to go for tertiary treatment, if tertiary treatment we have to go, what type of tertiary treatment has to be adopted. Uh, within the biological treatment which method will be preferred, uh, whether aerobic, anaerobic, within aerobic and anaerobic which one will be better. So, all these will depend upon the physical characteristics of the uh, effluent, chemical characteristics of the effluent. So, this we have to see. Now, waste minimization rather than attempting to treat the waste as they are produced, maximum effort has to be made to avoid, minimize the use or use the byproducts. So, we have to see that minimum possible waste is produced and if it is possible, we have to reuse it. The basic principles of waste minimization have to be used, avoid or eliminate the production of waste. This can be carried out by choosing alternative processes when designing the production unit. So, clean production options have to be taken care of. Reduction and minimization of waste within the industry uh, has to be considered so that the CTP load is minimum. Now, when the effluent is coming uh, within the CTP certainly we have to go for various treatment options. So, there are various pre-treatment requirements. So, effluent from industrial processes requires some form of pre-treatment prior to sending the effluent for further treatment at CETP. This is mainly required when wastewater is carried through gravity lines to minimize the corrosion and clogging. So, some primary or pre-treatment at individual industry level is required and it helps in the reduction in the biological treatment processes efficiency due to the presence of toxic constituents. So, if some specialty types of uh, pollutant are present, if the pollutant is unique in nature uh, which is not present in the industrial clusters from other industries. So, that pollutant if possible that should be maximum be taken care of in the primary industry itself. So, this is very important. So, pre-treatment uh, standards for sulphides, sulphates, pH are concerned with preventing the corrosion of concrete part in the gravity pipe. Limits for the discharge of oil, grease, grit and heavy sediments are prescribed. Uh, limits to heavy metals, toxic organics are also prescribed so that the CTP is not overburdened with respect to treatment. The inlet effluent quality standards for CTP is like this. So, it is possible that the pH should be in this temperature should be 45 degree or below. Uh, these are the various type of uh, uh, contaminants which are allowed to be present in the CTP inlet effluent quality. So, these can be taken care of in the CTP. Now, segregation of effluent streams at the individual member industries. So, effluent streams could be broadly segregated for combining. Uh, appropriately based upon the suitability of a specific treatment choice. So, effluent 
uh, at the individual industry level. So, they have to be separated. So, high TDS low COD, high COD low TDS. So, these type of uh, categorization may be done and also like we can have a separate pipe for sewage effluent and industrial effluent. So, these there are different model approaches which are there and some primary treatment have may have to be done at the industry individual industry level itself. Now, conveyance system how the water will be conveyed from individual industry to the CETP. So, we can use tankers, we can use pipes. If the industrial state is in early stage of development and accommodates mostly small scale industries, tankers are best alternatives. So, design elements of this tanker system will include the selection of container material which shoots all type of waste to be transported, choosing type and size of vehicle that are suitable for uh, transport routes, choosing the number of vehicles and developing safe operating procedures for handling hazardous material. So, in the initial stage when early stage is there with respect to development, tanker is a better choice. Then we can go later on for the pipes. This option would be feasible in the case of homogeneous member industries, transfer of pre-treated wastewater by an underground piping network from individual industries is practical when the participating firms are located very close to CTP. So, this way we will be able to transport the water from individual industries to CTP. Selection of pipe and joints must be done considering the anticipated pressure of influent flow and properties. In the, in the case of gravity pipelines, provisions of manholes of suitable size at every 30 meter interval and at the directional changes will help in the maintenance of the pipe this is there. We can go for open channel also, but it is vulnerable to rain water entry may impose excessive loadings on the treatment plant during the rainy season. So, open channels have to be covered with concrete and they are generally economical as compared to sewer lines, but uh, they have problems also. So, combination we can use the combination of above, the combination of these three uh, three uh, conveying systems may be adopted in actual practice depending upon the local conditions. So, like example is that an open channel with factory premises within the factory premises, then the tanker conveying system up to the terminal pumping station and then the terminal pumping station to CETP uh, pumping system. So, this way we can adopt any three or we should prefer tanker or pipe. So, this is there. Now, treatability and choice of technology at CTP, this is important. So, based upon the stream wise chemical composition and the data provided by the member industries, the CT promoter operator has to conduct the treatability studies to determine the specific treatment and recycling technologies as well as arrive at the capital and operational cost. So, objectives of the treatability will include covering the chemical composition of the wastewater and into the environmental parameter to understand the nature of the effluent. So, chemical composition has to be taken care of, it should be properly understood what are the various uh, problems associated with those chemical compositions, what are the interference during the treatment, all those things should be well understood. Then we should conceptualize the possible treatment schemes by conducting live scale studies to support the hypothesis with respect to conceptual treatment scheme. Then uh, wastewater characteristics and some treatment options, we have studied all these things in detail in this uh, lecture series as well as in another uh, course on physical chemical treatment. So, combination if the combination is high TDS, high COD and very high BOD, so, waste is not easily biodegradable, but toxic. So, in this case thermal decomposition, chemical oxidation, evaporation, secured landfill etcetera. If high TDS, high COD, high difference between COD, it is may be toxic, not suitable for biological treatment, mostly inorganic salts, so chemical treatment, evaporation and this. 
if high TDS high BOD is there, but low difference between COD and BOD. So, that means, we should go for anaerobic plus aerobic treatment. If the quantity is less, we can go for incineration, secure landfill, etcetera. If high TDS, low BOD and low BOD and COD difference. So, we should go for solar evaporation, force evaporation. So, there are many treatment options which are available. Depending upon that, we have to decide. Similarly, low TDS, high COD equivalently high BOD. So, it is highly organic effluent may not be easily biodegradable go for thermal decomposition, chemical oxidation, chemical plus biological treatment. If low TDS, high COD, high difference is there between again chemical recovery and chemical oxidation. If low TDS, high BOD is there and low difference go for anaerobic, aerobic treatment which is will be most common thing. Then low TDS, low BOD, low BOD, COD difference recycle and use after preliminary treatment. So, there are various options we have to check and depending upon that treatment has to be adapted. Now, uh, typically for small scale units, low capital investment and lower operation and maintenance cost for treatment are the prime factors. So, considering these factors, me mechanical and chemical processes are preferable to reduce the uh, suspended solid concentrations in the effluent before biological treatment. USB with less hydraulic detention time, less space requirement can be one of the possible options. In order to obviate the need of excessive civil work at CTP in, in making huge equalization and settling units, the member units can be provided with the settling and neutralization units. So, these units may be at the member units itself. To minimize the electrical cost, the possibility of substituting the bioenergy should be explored. So, can we generate bioenergy and can we use the bioenergy that has to be checked. Proper management of sludge with its nutritive value would mobilize resources to substitute the operational cost, especially from secondary biological treatment. So, sludge management is a big challenge and that has to be taken care of. Wastewater after treatment also has to be disposed of. So, disposal of treated effluent from CTP can be done any of the modes, surface water bodies, on land for irrigation, marine at fall, public sewers. So, this is important concern depending upon the uh, treatment that has been done. It is possible that they may be forced to reuse the water. Okay. So, the primary sludge in general, uh, disposal of sludge is also an issue. Primary sludge in general due to its constituent falls under the purview of regulatory provisions of proper disposal of TSDF. The secondary sludge from biological treatment predominantly contains nutrients thus would be available as manure. Both types of sludge would have to be dewatered to reduce the amount of sludge. So, this is very important. Any sludge suspected of still containing hazardous material has to be disposed of in a proper TSDF after analysis. So, this has to be taken care of. Uh, here some uh, photographs are shown here. So, we can see here the wastewater from different industries is coming to a uh, this particular unit where the wastewater is achieved. Uh, this is after some oil and grease similar other things. This is being treatment in an aerobic uh, reactor activated sludge process. So, this is aerobic reactor. We can have a centrifuge for uh, wastewater separation from the sludge. So, you can see the sludge falling into here and this rickshaw will be further taken off where the sludge will be disposed. We can have clarified water tank from here. This water has to be treated in the like activated carbon filter or sand filters, the one which is shown here. Another sand filter shown here. So, there are different possibilities. We can see the sludge drying beds which are here. So, these are the sludge drying beds where the drying is being done after that they have to be properly disposed of. We have already studied the in detail how to take care of the sludge management issues. They are since huge amount of sludge is produced in the CTP all those things have to be taken care of. Now, Cost analysis is also very important in case of CETP. In general, the treatment cost will include the regular collection and treatment charges. 
to ensure financial flows and stability a certain portion of the equity shall be collected from the member industry and so as a membership charge. So, the capital cost for a CTP will include land, process know-how, the technology, equipment and electrical cost, okay, civil including administrative building and process units, standby DG sets because we cannot stop the operation, so DG sets have to be there, pumping preferably high density polyethylene of suitable process rating have to be used, then instrumentation at the plant laboratory equipment for analysis including instrumental analysis etcetera. So, these laboratory has to be there at the CTP for analyzing the inlet BOD, outlet BOD, inlet COD, outlet COD all those inlet and outlet parameters. Piping in the industrial state or for tankers. So, all these will come into the capital cost category. Similarly, operation cost will also be there, power, the state electricity board and diesel for standby diesel sets. So, power requirement for that operation cost is required. Fresh drinking water, bore water for chemical solution preparation, transportation charges for effluent, then sewage water charges if provided, then plant maintenance and repairs including mechanical, electrical and instruments, then sludge disposal charges will be there, laboratory chemicals and glassware charges. Plant process chemicals including consumables like lime, alum, polyelectrides, all the coagulant, flocculant that we are using, they will also come under the category of operational costs. So, these are the various costs which are associated with both fixed and operational costs. Similarly, in the operational costs, effluent and sludge analysis charges, electrical spares, mechanical spares, R&D activity expenditures consultancy charges if required, they will also come into picture. Other administrative and other type of charges will also come into picture because we have to pay for the salary and benefits to the workers, overtime charges, auditors will be appointed. So, we have to go give charges to auditors also, bonus, medical and other benefits. So, CTP has all the three types of charges, capital cost, operational cost, and administrative and other costs and th this we have to plan beforehand and we have to see depending upon these costs, we have to levy the membership charge on the member industries, then we can go for finally, the CETP will be sustainable. Uh, there have been many references which some of the references which are been used mainly are given here, you can refer to CETP. Now, since we have come to the end of this lecture uh, for biological process design for wastewater treatment. So, let us summarize that what we have studied the content which have been covered in this course. So, in the course we have uh, first started with biological treatment fundamentals including microbiology and ecology. We studied, we studied the fundamentals of biochemical operations including the conversion processes for organic and inorganic matter, wastewater characterization we studied in great detail. After that we studied the modeling of biological treatment processes including the stoichiometry, reaction and bacterial growth, kinetics we studied, we studied reactor hydraulics including mass balance also. Later on we started studying the treatment of wastewater in general we studied. And after treatment, we divided that into different sections. So, up till now, we studied the basics. After from here, we studied the started studying the wastewater treatment in detail. So, in the initially, we studied aeration, sedimentation, including uh, biological treatment process, biological nitrification, denitrification, phosphorus removal. So, all the things we studied. Later on, we studied in detail the aerobic and anaerobic biological treatment processes including aerotrate lagoon, activated sludge system, tickling filter, rotating disc reactors, sequential batch reactor. So, all these reactors we have studied. Later on, we studied the anaerobic biological treatment processes including USB and hybrid USB reactors etc. We after that, we studied advanced biological wastewater treatment systems. 
So, these included fluidized bed bioreactors, membrane bioreactors, moving bed biofilm reactors. Uh, we studied biological nitrogen removal in these advanced biological wastewater treatment options. We studied a lot with respect to sludge management. So, sludge characteristics, sludge production, stabilization, thickening, dewatering, pathogen, sludge transformation and disposal methods all we studied because lot of sludge is generated during biological uh, treatment and we should study the sludge management because this is very important aspect of wastewater biological wastewater treatment. So, all of these we have studied in detail. Lastly, we studied the sustainability, some concepts with respect to sustainable development, cleaner production, EIA and later on we studied few studies on the case studies with respect to wastewater management in a dairy industry, in slaughterhouse and lastly today we studied CTP. There are some more studies uh, that have been reported in another lecture of mine on physico chemical treatment of wastewater. And in those we have studied all other physical chemical operations including advanced oxidation processes in detail. So, you can refer to those lectures also if you are interested and uh, this way we have uh, come to the end of this lecture series and hopefully you will have learned a few things in this biological process design for wastewater treatment. Certainly, you can always refer to many books which are listed here some of them. So, these are the suggested books for further reading, uh, these books are very good. You can always refer to these are there are some other books that I have listed here. These books I have taken use in preparation of the slides as well as in the delivery of lectures. So, you can always refer to these books. I think these books will be helpful in further understanding the topics. I, with this I will end this lecture series. Thank you very much.